Welcome back, everybody, and all of those who have not seen this channel before. Uh, you've now listened to me talk for all of five seconds, so you're welcome for that. Today I'm doing a book review on A Wild Sheep Chase, written by Haruki Murakami. And now I'm going to play really loud rap music for like ten seconds. See ya. Stop me. Stop me. I like to keep my videos quick, concise, and I like to give you guys what you came for up front. So, I'm going to start off by saying... I did like this book, I enjoyed reading it, and I'm gonna end up rating it a strong 6 out of 10. And some of the reasons that I liked it, mainly it was extremely vivid, almost like a lucid dream if you've ever been in one of those, but the lucidity of the book didn't end up leading to a dreary plot where the author goes on and on and on about some dream scenario which you end up getting bored with. Everything kept pretty good pace and I never really wanted to put the book down. My main gripe with this book, though, uh, like the other things I've read by Haruki Murakami, is it was pretty confusing, and I'm not that smart of a person, so maybe it's less confusing for you, especially those literature types who pretend that they know everything, but I was confused. I don't want to give too much about the plot away, but I'm going to go over a couple things that happened and then give you my take on the whole story. So this book follows an unnamed protagonist who runs an advertising agency. He starts off as a 29-year-old, but honestly I got confused how old he was because there was foot-flopping timelines at the beginning, where he started off younger, he got older, his wife left him. Very strange. But eventually we end up in this timeline where he has a new girlfriend who has these incredible ears which are bewitching him the entire time. Now, I almost made an entire video just on this alone, and... I'm very confused about why this was included in the book, and I thoroughly believe that Murakami has some sort of weird ear kink. It doesn't matter what anyone tells me at this point. Oh, it, it's symbolism for this, symbolism for him not listening to other people. I think he has an issue with it, because I've seen it in other books, too. Now, if you know anything about this weird ear obsession, please comment something below, because I'm interested to see what you guys have to say. However, if you don't agree with me, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm just going to read the comment. I'm not changing my mind. Anyways, this girlfriend of his is nothing but an utter convenience to him rather than her having these nice ears, and frankly, I'm not sure why she's sticking with this guy to begin with. Nonetheless, uh, this unnamed protagonist, he has owned this advertising agency for a while now, and at some point he posted a picture from his friend named Rat, who is often the, uh, not the Himalayas, that's not even near Japan, what am I talking about? But somewhere up in the northern Japan area where he has this beautiful mountain house. However, this person, Rat, is highly secluded and has not spoken in person with the unnamed protagonist in quite some time. His friend Rat continues to send him messages for some unknown reason, just to keep in touch, I guess. But the unnamed protagonist decides to use one of these pictures in an advertisement of his. Now, this is where the plot gets interesting. Now, so it turns out, in this photo, there's a picture of a sheep with a star on its back, and this sheep is extremely important to an old man. Now, this old man is a very powerful fascist leader in the Japanese business world. He's risen through the ranks, and supposedly, the sheep can inhabit people and give them powers, take over their free will, do certain things for them. And it's pretty unclear exactly how this sheep does this, or who it does it to. What we do know is that the sheep is gone from this old man. And the old man is very upset about him. He's trying to find it. And he's also on his deathbed. So, he has so much power, he insists that this unnamed protagonist goes out of his way to go find this sheep, since he had the picture of it. Now, he gives him one month to go find the sheep, or else he's going to destroy his business. So, all in all, I'm not going to ruin too much about what exactly happens. That's why you got to go read the book. But... The sheep ends up going to a few different people, we meet these people along the way, and towards the end we get a very unsatisfying ending, similar to what I've felt in many other Haruki Murakami novels. We're left with one question though, which seems to never get answered. Why? What are the themes here? Why exactly did this all happen? Now, I have a few theories myself. Chiefly, I think Murakami was going after the certain ways that you can live your life, and the choices that you can make. This narrative was a really effective way to go about presenting these things, although it wasn't exactly clear at the very beginning, it does become more clear towards the end. We're given this slightly disheveled character who's obviously made a lot of good, maybe bad decisions in his life, and is at a crossroads. 
Now, we're given this extremely lucid format, which feels like a dream, and I think that's coming from a place where it's meant to be prophetic and telling of how this man can choose his life and almost a bit philosophic. Almost like Murakami's trying to give him a choice after he wakes up from this dream to act on the dream and show that he's learned something. Now we're presented with three types of people that you can be or become. One is first the old man who uses the sheep's power to guide him to a place of influence and really capitalize on the things he wants to do in his life. Now the second man is slightly disheveled, not even slightly disheveled, he is basically decrepit and obsessive over this sheep. And now why I believe that this is the second path that you could go down in your life, this man let the sheep inhabit him, which still not sure how that happens, but the sheep seemed to take his free will away and he just moseyed on down the line and just let the sheep make all of his decisions for him. And once it was gone, he was upset because now he had to really enact what he wanted to do in life versus letting someone else make all the decisions for him. Now the third person that Murakami chooses to show us is the rat. Now the rat has completely rejected that the sheep has taken over him and his free will, and he ultimately decides to kill himself. While this is a very extreme case, it is a choice that someone might have in life, and it's presented to our no-name protagonist. I think it's very interesting that at the end of the novel, we're left off with almost nothing and the protagonist goes doing whatever he likes afterwards. However, we know now that he's going to do one of three things. Take his free will, which is being somewhat manipulated by his past events, and really bolster his position in life and accomplish things that he wants to accomplish. Or two, just mosey on down the road and fester in his sadness. And of course he has that third option, which is to just off himself and forget like anything ever happened. and really just call it quits there, but I had a feeling if there's going to be another one of these, it's going to be one of the first two options. Something I found out recently is that this series is, well, this book is actually a part of a series. It's a tetralogy, which I plan to read the other three novels following this review. So if you guys stay tuned and subscribe to my channel, you might get to see some of those soon. I'd like to thank all of you for watching, especially those of you who got to the end of the video here. Now, if you haven't subscribed to me, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out and makes me motivated to continue making these videos. And hopefully, I'll see you guys all in the next one.